there we have um, a 2010 or 2011, I'm not yet very sure, um, Chevrolet Aveo LX. No, it says um, Aveo LT um, on the badge um, at the back. I'm not sure yet about the engine size. I haven't got those details. The complaint is uh, uh, low power. Uh, that's the biggest complaint. Um, Ivan has test driven it already um, before the customer left, but he test drove it and uh, he's thinking um, they have a clutch issue as well. Actually, I tried to drive the vehicle into the garage up some uh, slope and I had to release the clutch almost all the way for this vehicle to get moving and I concur with him at this point that uh, we are probably looking at um, um, a worn out clutch but uh, when you run the engine clearly um, you can feel a misfire I've already been uh, I've already scanned it using this tool just for a quick um, check and I uh, couldn't find any port codes actually I can run the engine and do that again for you guys um, I don't know if you can pick up the misfire it is quite prominent you can hear it I'm sure you can hear it and the fan, I think, um, someone has been messing around with this vehicle. They've, uh, they've made the uh, engine cooling fan run all the time. As soon as you turn the engine on, it's running all the time, which I think is not a good thing. Oh, now it's stopped. Okay, so maybe that's how it works. Um, as soon as you start the engine, it first checks that the fan is running and then stops. Because right now it's just stopped, but it was running before, soon after I started the vehicle. And I use OBD2 software. I am trying to read codes here. There are no stored codes, and neither are there any pending codes, uh, which is kind of weird because this engine is clearly misfiring. This is a manual transmission. Um, the customer, when they came in, said they had been advised they need um, uh, an ignition coil. I'm going to verify that the, uh, it doesn't have any ignition, um, spark ignition related issues. And also, uh, one of the other things I want to check for, um, is uh, the injector functionality. Anyway, as you can see, there is no port code. And when I went into live data and I tried to look at um, the fuel trims and the oxygen sensors, the front uh, downstream oxygen sensor seemed to be working fine, but the rear one didn't seem to budge a bit. I'm going to show that to you. Okay, fuel system status, I want that. And graduated load value maybe in coolant temperature it's so important right now i'll get the fuel trims as well and also look at the intake manifold absolute pressure well that's what uh, tells the engine computer uh, the load on the engine and I think I'm also interested in the TPS. Okay, oxygen sensor data. Mm, I think that's it for now. I want to see those guys. It is still in open loop. It takes a while to go into closed loop. I'm going to rev the engine up a bit, a little bit to see if I can um, uh, uh, like kind of kick it see if it can go into 
close loop. Okay, it has just gone into close loop now, and you can see. I want to turn on the SC and if and see if the load uh, the load PID changes. Oh yeah, it does. So that sounds uh, that seems like um, the working map sensor. That's most are trying to help me open the room. Uh, so I also want to see again the map sensor data it changes with the uh, load. So I think the map sensor is working somewhat. TPS, I'm going to rev it up a bit and see. I think the TPS is uh, finish now. Uh, this is of more interest to me. This you can see the long term pure things a little bit positive, uh, fourteen percent. I want to see what happens when I rev it up to. It goes down a little bit and then rest back where it was. I don't think uh, it has a... I'm going to check to see if this paper has a map sensor, which I doubt because I'm not, I am not. didn't see it among the uh, PID list. Uh, but it looks like it is uh, running a little bit lean and you can see it from the front oxygen sensor. But when you rev it up a bit, when you go to the throttle, you can see the sensor, uh, the upstream sensor reacts, but not the rear one. Now, the rear one not reacting is... Uh, it will probably mean the uh, the rear auto sensor is faulty. Uh, but that's one of the last things I'm going to have to check. Uh, but the rear auto sensor, I wouldn't expect it to affect uh, to effective pure trim or anything else for that matter to create a misfire as bad as uh, I'm hearing on, on this vehicle. Front uh, oxygen sensor, I am kind of satisfied with it. Okay, um, the other thing I want to do, your system is in closed loop. I want to turn off the engine and then switch um, ignition switch on again but without running the engine and see what the map sensor reads. I want to see something very close to 88 kph. Yeah, it's saying 87, took a while, took a few seconds to update. Um, Seems like the map sensor is fine. O2 rear O2 sensor, mm -hmm. um, the one upstream of the catalytic converter. I don't like that one, but I doubt it is the cause of our issues. It is some other problem which I think is not related to uh, the issue at hand. So uh, the next step I'm going to take now is to have a look at the the coil and the injectors. Um, I'm going to kind of ramp them and see if they are creating um, any on the high tension wires. I'm um, going to the spark plugs. I'm going to check to see if there is spark happening and also check the injectors as well. Okay, I've set up to check the ignition um, functionality first. These are uh, spark plug boots. I don't know, they don't all look original on the vehicle. They actually all look different. These 
high tension wires all look different. Look at this one. This is different. Um, this boot is different. This I'm not sure at this point which which of them is original on the vehicle. Anyway, I'm going to focus. Um, these are the ignition coil. It has uh, a pair. I think this is a wet spark system. So I'm going to look at uh, the high tension wires using this um, ignition coil probe. Uh, it's uh, actually coil on plug probe, but I'm going to use it to check uh, voltage in the high tension wires here. use a small oscilloscope and this wire I have to set it up first yes, so I want this lower a little bit higher And this wire. Time base. I'm going to begin with say 20 milliseconds. And uh, the voltage. Easy to say fifty millivolts per per division. Engine is running now. I'm not sure if you can pick up the misfire, but it's clearly there. And here you can see I've got ignition spark events on that. I'm going to actually widen it. I'm going to widen it to say. a bit too wide but I can see the uh, ignition spark events on that coil that is coil number one coil number two doesn't have doesn't seem to have anything I'm going to change the time base again Oh, it does have. It does appear to have something. Yeah, number two seems to have spark. I'm not looking at the quality of the spark now, I'm just checking for presence of spark. Number three seems to have spark events, although I'm not sure about the height of I don't like the height of coil number two. I 
don't like the height compare it to coil number one seems to be higher number two number two also seems high enough from what I can see but number three Number three looks different. I'm not happy with it. It's not. I'm not. I'm not seeing that uh, voltage spike that I would want to see. And finally, let's see number four. Number four also looks good. I'm seeing voltage spikes, but number three, I'm going to change the change the location where I was um, testing it from along the wire I've changed location it is actually getting shorter now I think number three the one that seems not to be contributing it seems to be active but not really contributing a lot I'm not happy with coil number three, or at least uh, the ignition on, on number three. It has two coils, West Park system. So coil for uh, number three is the same coil for uh, sitting number two, which when we put it on the high tension wire here for coil number two, for ignition spark number two, you can see it's producing good spark. So it could be a problem localized to cylinder number three I'm um, going to investigate that further but first I need to rule out that the injectors none of them is falling out okay straight away I decided to go for injector number three first because it was of interest uh, that cylinder was of interest and you can see from here that we have um, some kind of ramp on it which looks doesn't look so bad um, I see it going up and then flattening out and then being cut out now I'm going to compare it with the other cylinders uh, this is no easy task by the way because the engine is hot uh, but I'm going to attempt uh, current ramp for injector number three. Injector number two, I don't seem to see anything, but I accidentally pressed this zeroing button, so I'm going to attempt again. Injector number three, you can see the current ramp. Injector number two, I don't seem to see anything on injector number two.
Oh, there is, there is. Only the uh, image is inverted. Yes, you can see it there. So this is injector number two. I'm having a little bit of trouble with, uh, I think it is a combination of the trigger and the time base that I'm using. I wanted to widen the time base, but when I do that, I lose a bit of detail. So I want uh, to narrow it a little bit and when I do the image seems to be coming and going however if I go back to this guy injector number three that's what injector number three looks like stable there I want to change the time base to that Yes, that's more like how I want to hold it in the image, in the screen. there but the image seems to be inverted and I think it's very similar I think you can see it's quite similar to, uh, to number three it's inverted though I can correct that by just turning this around now the right way up in quotes to move the Y position down. I think you can see it there. It's comparable to number two. I'm going for number one now. Which is a bit of a hard one. Okay, I'm now on cylinder number one again this thing could be inverted see you there. I want to change the time base to compare directly with the other cylinders again. I want to go back to 5 milliseconds. Was it 5 or 2?
You know, you can see the ramp is there. The time base has changed a bit, but the ramp is there. Just for comparison, I'm going to go back to feeling the number three. See that uh, proceeding on number three just disappeared off the screen. There, I'm losing a bit of detail, but when I try to get to go in to get a bit of detail, it kind of disappears off the screen. Um, I have to work out how to make the thing hold the pattern on the screen. It's one of those detailed kind of instructions that I haven't gone through for operating this thing. If you can see number three, compare it to number one. I'm on number one now and you can see they compare. Try to go in a bit, and you can see it there. Yeah, once in a while you get to see it in a wider format, and I think that looks good to me. It's compared with all the other injectors. I'm on number four now, but the image is inverted. Yeah, you can see the... So all these injectors are functioning right. Um, we haven't got access from the other vehicle this phone. Uh, this fuel ray doesn't have a shredder valve, so I can't directly put my gauge on it to make a fuel pressure measurement. But from the response, from the total response, I can, for now, I think I can ignore fuel pressure issues. For now, I may come back and revisit it. Um, that concludes my uh, injector um, injector head test. At least the electrical side seems to be working fine. Uh, we may probably take them out. You may actually see me do that in the end. We may take them out and um, check uh, how they are, you know. How, how what their spray pattern is like. I may do that, but for now, because I found um, uh, it's, um, let me turn off the engine first. I found on cylinder number three, I found uh, the spark line that I didn't like. So, um, when you look at let me share this clip closer. Have a look at these cables, uh, high tension wires. This, for seeing a number one, doesn't look similar to the boot for number two. Number three looks different. Number four also looks different. Now, this is uh, what we call the United Nations of parts. A collection of high tension wires from different maybe makes even brands I'm not sure but and then seeing a problem with the um, spark line pattern on, on this one 
I'm going to do I may do two things now I'm going to first of all look for compression actually instead of putting a compression gauge in here I can disable fuel and then crank it and then look at the um, the current uh, ramps on, on going to the starter and then I'll, that means I have been able to parade all of them and I can tell which is actually I can do another thing at the same time I can at that same time I can my uh, forgive me for pausing my brain is trying to work what next step I need to take and at the same time I'm trying to talk to you but I think I can also check for ignition timing although I don't think it's an issue actually ignition timing doesn't seem to be an issue let me do just the current ramp to check the relative compression of, on, on these cylinders okay now we are going to check the relative compression on uh, these cylinders uh, my high amp probe is on uh, the negative uh, cable going to the one of which is going to the starter there are two cables in there one of them is going to the starter and what we are going to do is there it is going to crank it for us and we shall see what the ramps are going to be like right. corner I think you can see the ramps are kind of even. I'm even going to attempt recording this. Dam. Uh, let me try to replay it and see. Mm, that didn't work like I was anticipating, but let's do it again. Kuba. Get out. I think you can see there even. Um, let's do it a third time. Dam. I will name the M screen. Dam. Yeah, Kimara. I think you can see they are kind of even. I don't see any particular falling out. Banga Kuba again. Mujia 
Double checking a spark plug is of Zijayo, Flag with Fanana. Then maybe to choose. Nay, why you want to go and wear that to the end of our can. Twins of two Sam, why are two and three? Nifla and Jau, and Flava problem with your way tumbling plug. Checking and oxen by you right now, so can you plug at Rabbit's Fanana? Natural to a big wound, spark visually with Fanana for the spark. Which one is it? This one. We have a very good boat. We have a very good boat. We have a very good boat. Too much charging. i Oh, chat. 
No, it is very clear, you know, has a problem. In the chain of is what is the solution? This is a problem ya boot. Boot ya munda ya kutoka. Jeta ga high tension wire you know Roger. Is it, that is the question. Hmm? What is that? Kaka tukumukunire bijya kumukunira yo gundi. Maybe <laughs> ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ